Hi, and welcome to Coding TensorFlow. I'm Robert Crow, and today we'll be learning how to get started using TensorFlow to create and train a model when the result we need is a single number, like maybe a price or a probability, or in this case, miles per gallon. In other words, a regression problem. Real quick, let's talk for a moment about a regression problem versus a classification problem. Regression and classification are probably the two most commonly solved problems with machine learning today. Today, we're going to be working on a regression problem. So we want our model to look at an example from our data and predict a number. Usually, that will be a floating point number. Now, if we were doing a classification problem, then we'd want our model to look at an example from our data and tell us which class or group it thinks this example is. So it might be telling us that it thinks this example is a fish or a bird or maybe a weasel. But today, we're doing regression. Specifically, today, we're going to look at training a model to tell us the miles per gallon of cars from the 1970s by looking at data, like their weight, the number of cylinders, the horsepower. Just look at these beauties. Miles per gallon is a single number. So regression is the right thing here. OK, one more thing. We're going to be using Keras. If you haven't heard of Keras before, it's a high-level API for deep learning, and it's very user-friendly. And it's really powerful, too. And today, we're just going to scratch the surface. OK, let's get started. So today, we're going to be using Seaborn. And Seaborn isn't installed by default on a Colab, so we're going to pull it with a pip install. You can totally do that in a Colab. You can install whatever you need to. OK. That's it. Seaborn's installed. That was quick. Now we're going to go through the other imports that we need to do. Pandas and, of course, TensorFlow itself, including Keras. OK, that's good. So now we've got version 1.13 of TensorFlow. TensorFlow includes a lot of great data sets. But today, we're going to be reaching out to a data set that's at the University of California at Irvine. It's a great resource. They have this repository of public domain data sets, and it's a great tool when you're looking for data. Keras makes it really easy for us to download our data set. You can see the URL right there of the UCI repository. Then, because it's easier to see what we're doing, we're going to give our columns some names. And then we want to take a look at our data and, and just see what it looks like. That's always a good thing to do, and pandas will help us do that. Data's almost never clean, even data that you've gotten for something like UCI. So we need to make sure that all our data is good values. One of the things we're going to look for is unknown values. And you can see from this that there are six of them in the horsepower column. In this case, there's only six rows, so we can be safe just dropping them. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have one column that's different, the origin column. It's not a numeric column. It's categorical. And usually with a categorical column, you want to convert it to what's known as a one-hot column. So to do that, we're going to first remove the origin column, and then we're going to create three new columns, one for each country that the cars could be coming from. And each of those will only have a value of one when the car came from that country. Let's take a look at that. So we're going to split our data in two pieces. 80% of it, or you can see there a fraction of 0.8, we're going to keep in our training data set. And the other is going to be our test data set. So you might be wondering, why did we split our data? Well, we want it to do well on data that it's never seen before. So what we're going to do is split it into two pieces and keep one of those pieces. And we're only going to use that when we're ready to test our model and see how well it does for data it's never seen before. That's called generalization. A model that does well on data that it's never seen before generalizes well. So now let's take another look at our data. Specifically, let's look at the miles per gallon, the cylinders, the displacement, and the weight. To do that, we're going to use Seaborn's pair plot utility, which gives us a nice plot of the joint distributions of each of our features, along with kernel density estimation plots, or KDE plots, along the diagonal. If you haven't seen them before, KDE plots are essentially just smoothed histograms. 
So you can see there are some clear relationships between some of our features. Okay, now let's look at some summary statistics of our features, like the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum, the quartiles, and the maximum. One of the things I want you to notice here is that the ranges of these values are very different. And that's not a good thing in general when you're training a machine learning model. So we're gonna be fixing that in a little bit. The next thing we need to do is make sure that we're not giving our model the right answer, meaning we don't wanna give it the labels in our training data, or for that matter, in our test data. So we need to split those off from our data sets. Okay, so it's time to deal with those ranges of values that were really different. We need to do something called normalization of our features. When we do that, all of our features will fall between zero and one. And the way we accomplish that is essentially by using a z-score. We subtract the mean and then divide by the standard deviation. So let's do that now. So now we're ready to build our model and Keras makes it really easy. We're gonna use Keras Sequential, which gives us a fully connected model. It's gonna have three layers. All three are dense layers. The first two have a ReLU activation, and the first one needs to know what the shape of the input data is. The last layer doesn't have an activation, meaning that it's a linear activation. And for a regression model, that's what we want. Okay, we also need to give it an optimizer. We're going to use RMS prop for that. And we need a loss function. We're going to use mean squared error for that. And we need to give it metrics. The metrics are what we're going to use to see how well our model is doing. We'll give it mean squared error and mean absolute error. OK, let's go ahead and create our model. You could ignore those warnings. Those things come up sometimes. Now let's take a look at a summary of our model. Keras makes it really easy to do that. So you can see that we have our three layers. And notice that we have 4,865 trainable parameters, even for a very simple model like this. That's a lot to try to train, but Keras and TensorFlow make that easy. Now we can go ahead and try our model, even though we haven't trained it, and just make sure that it produces results and doesn't blow up. Let's go ahead and do that now. So there. Now we've got some results from our model, and we haven't trained it, so of course those numbers are meaningless, but the shape is right, and it didn't throw any errors, so things are looking good. So now we're ready to train our model. We're gonna train it for a thousand epochs. Each epoch is a pass through all of our training data. And as we do that, we wanna print a dot so that we know that our model is still training. Sometimes this could take days. We wanna make sure it's still training. So to do that, we're going to create a print dot class. The other thing we're going to do is split off 20% of our data in a validation set. And we'll use that to test our model as we're training it to see how it's doing. OK, let's go ahead and train our model. See those dots? We want something like those dots. If this was taking a week, we'd want to make sure that we knew that it was still going. And there we go. It's done. So we saved a history object, and we can look at our training results. Let's do that now. There we go. You see we've got loss, our mean absolute error, and mean squared error. Those were our metrics. And we've got the same things for validation. Validation loss, validation mean absolute error. But wait a minute. Something looks wrong with those numbers. The loss and the validation loss are going up. Let's take another look at this. A lot of times, plotting will really help to see what's going on. We're going to use matplotlib to do that. And we're going to plot learning curves, one for each of our metrics. So there are our curves. The green is our validation error. And you'll notice, wait a minute, the green is going up. That's not good. This is classic overfitting. So how do you fix it? Well, there's lots of different ways. But today, we're going to use something called early stopping. Early stopping is really very simple. It just stops training the model as soon as the model stops improving. One of the things you need to specify is what should it look for? In this case, we're going to look at validation loss. And how patient should it be? How long should it wait before it decides that things aren't getting better? So let's go ahead and train our model again. But this time, 
we use early stopping. And look at that. Those curves are perfect. Both the validation loss and the training loss are going down together. Let's look at how well our model is doing overall. We'll look at the mean absolute error. Look at that. It's 1.8 miles per gallon off. Is that good? Well, you decide. But for me, if I was trying to predict the miles per gallon of a car by looking at the cylinders and the weight, I don't think I could do any better than that. So now we're ready to make some predictions. We'll make several and then plot them out. Look at that. That's really not too bad. If they were perfect, they'd all be on that line. But they're all pretty close, so really not too bad. Let's check and see what our error looks like. We'll use a histogram for that. So it's pretty close to a Gaussian, but not quite. With a data set this small, you wouldn't expect it to be perfect. So that was great. We learned a lot today. We learned about mean squared error loss. We learned about metrics that help us understand how well our model is training. We learned about normalization, which helps us prepare our data. And we learned about early stopping, which helps us deal with overfitting. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. And don't forget to subscribe to the TensorFlow channel for more stuff like this.